Hello, welcome back to a new video. So I want to talk about my brand new ROG Ally. After using it for a while, it's actually really good, better than I was expecting. And it's actually now become my main desktop computer. I've replaced my main laptop with this ROG Ally and I've got this little keyboard and my mouse and it functions pretty much just like how you'd expect a computer to function. I've got Windows, got my desktop, I've got browsers, I've got folders and files. I guess it is kind of strange going from a 2400 US dollar gaming laptop and then switching from that to an ROG Ally which is only about $700 but I just had to because my gaming laptop is falling apart. So I bought this because my gaming laptop, my RTX 3060 17 inch Razorblade Pro Gaming Laptop has kind of been fading recently after using it for nearly over two years. I have no idea what's wrong with my laptop but it gets really hot when I try and play games and it plays games really badly, it's really slow, really laggy, probably because it's so hot inside. And I haven't been able to play latest modern games at very good FPSs, even on low settings. So I had to get something new to replace it with. But unfortunately, I'm kind of broke right now, so I can't afford to buy another really high-end laptop or desktop computer. I spent over $2,000 on that laptop, so I'm kind of upset that it's broken already after only two years. I don't know what's wrong with it, maybe the fans are clogged up or something, but I don't see any dust on the fan vents, I'm going to have to open it up and see what's going on inside. So when trying to figure out what to replace it with, I thought, okay, I don't have much money to spend here, I could get a PlayStation 5, that's got good games on it, but it doesn't have Steam, and I can't refund the games if I don't like it, and I can't really do other computing things on the PlayStation 5. So I didn't want to buy the PlayStation 5. And then I thought, what about the Steam Deck? I had the Steam Deck before, but the performance wasn't very good, and I didn't really like how it was running Linux instead of Windows. And then I thought, okay, there's other handhelds like the Ioneo 2, but that's too expensive. It's like over $1,000. And then there's the ROG Ally. It's not too expensive. It's not too cheap, which means it's got good performance. And best of all, it's running Windows 11 full operating system. And this cost me... $700 or maybe like $690 and I think for the price of $700 you get a really powerful computing machine that can play modern AAA games at pretty good FPS even though it's on low settings and after using this for a while it feels so much faster and snappier and responsive compared to my gaming laptop and it can even play games that I was struggling to play on the gaming laptop and Best of all, it's really quiet, so listen, if I just stop talking for a second. It's so quiet, there is a fan, but right now it's not on because I'm not doing anything, I'm just on the web browser, not really doing much, but when you do play games, there is a turbo mode, and the fans do get a bit noisy, but nowhere near as noisy as my gaming laptop gets, and it's so peaceful now, I can just browse the internet, and do what I usually do without having this stupid fan noise. So for web browsing and general computer use, it does everything you'd expect it to do really quickly and really snappity. I'm really surprised and pleased with the performance of using this as a desktop computer. You got YouTube, you got Edge, you got your browsers and your websites and whatever you want from a computer. It really is amazing to think that you can do all this when compared to things like the Switch OLED, which can't do anything apart from Okay, it's got a YouTube app, I guess, but it's so much better being able to just use Windows as, use this as like a Windows desktop computer that I can play YouTube like this. And then for gaming, for some reason, this thing plays games better than my gaming laptop. I was playing all these games on my gaming laptop like Starfield, Forza, Elden Ring, what else? I can't remember now. But a lot of the new games I was trying to play on my gaming laptop, just it was struggling to play those games. But when I try them on this thing, it's completely smooth with good FPS between 40 and 60. And okay, I can't play the games on ultra or medium or high. I play them on low for ultimate performance. But it still looks pretty good even on low settings and I got amazing FPS. I played Starfield on this and it was really smooth. Look, I'll launch Starfield right now. And I'll show you how good it is. Look, I've got Xbox Gaming Pass. Can't get that on the Steam Deck, can you? So here is Starfield.
So when I played Starfield, my experience of it was kind of ruined because I played it when it first came out on my gaming laptop. And I don't know if it's because the game wasn't really fully optimized for NVIDIA graphics card, it was more optimized for AMD cards, which this is using an AMD chip, or I don't know, like an AMD CPU and GPU. I don't know if it's integrated or not. Wait, my keyboard's not on. I turned the keyboard off because it was flashing. I don't know how to turn off the LG, the RGB lights. So it's kind of annoying on the video. It's like flashing so much, but in real life, it's not. It's a bit weird. So here is Starfield and it runs surprisingly well, better than you'd think. Well, better than my laptop run it. When I tried playing this game, I played it when it first came out and I finished it on my laptop and the performance was pretty bad. It kept stuttering and lagging. Sometimes it'd crash. There'd be weird bugs and uh, wow, that loaded really quickly as well. So let me just land somewhere. Where can I land? Let me undock first. It is shocking how well this game plays when it was struggling so much on my gaming laptop. It feels really weird. And the game plays really smoothly. Look, if you press this button here, you can bring up this on-screen monitor, which shows you FPS and temperatures. So it's currently 54 FPS, and the temperature is like 73 Celsius. Let me find a planet to land on first. It feels so nice playing this game now. I might actually play it a second time just to experience playing it without all the lag that I experienced on my laptop. How do I land again? I'm pretty sure I can land on this. Oops. Okay, where's this button? And then land. Yeah, the game ran really badly on my laptop. I remember it very clearly how laggy and stuttery it was. I had to really fiddle with the settings to finally get it to work somewhat acceptably. But this game on the ROG Ally, I didn't really have to fiddle with the settings. Everything is on low. I haven't tried it on medium. We could try it, but I think it's gonna make the game run worse. And I'd rather have high FPS. Well, this is not a great planet to show you because I mean, it's just a barren moon. But it, it runs really smoothly. It is so weird because I've never played this game whilst it's running this well. Wait, let's just go to another planet. This planet sucks. Why don't I land on the moon? I really like this keyboard. It's so soft and spongy to press the keys. I don't know why people like those clicky buttons. They're, they're just annoying. I might get a monitor as well because playing this... Playing on this as a desktop when the screen is so small is a bit annoying, but <coughs> i got to buy a monitor next, I guess. Actually, I'm going to try this on the TV. I've got a HDMI cable. I'm going to plug this into the TV and then put the keyboard and mouse on the table. And then I'm going to see what it's like to play on the big TV. So let's go to a planet that doesn't look like a boring moon. I can't believe how smooth this feels. It's so smooth. Like the transitions between the different menus are also much faster and snappier than it was on my gaming laptop. Although I think I found an abandoned space station, the Almagest. Al Almagest. How would you even pronounce that? <laughs> so let's go into the space station and see if there's any action to be had. And then maybe later I'll show you Cyberpunk 2077. I also want to get GTA 5 and see how well that works on this. So far every game I've tried on this has just worked without any problems. It's also really nice to be able to unplug this and then just go onto the bed and then play some Starfield or Cyberpunk whilst lying down on the bed. Something you wouldn't really feel like you would be able to do normally. Oh, I know what this place is. It's that stupid, annoying floating casino. I really hate this place. I really don't like the zero grav places. So let's go and land on that planet. Oh, this is my ship. I can't believe how smooth this feels. I keep saying that over and over again. But after playing this for over 100 hours on my laptop where it was just a stuttery mess. Damn, it's so different. 
I mean, it even looks better than my laptop when I zoom in on things closely. How do I zoom in? Oh no, it's not cyberpunk. Even little details, like the text on things, looks really sharp and crisp. Ah, oh, look, Sarah Morgan in bed. It's so weird, I can't believe you're playing this super new game. That's supposed to need really good specs on this tiny little handheld device. It is very strange. Although the battery does drain really quickly, we're at 52% already. <laughs> okay, where's that planet? There definitely was a planet behind this space station. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's just land, land here. I wonder what to try next. Maybe I'll try... I did try Elden Ring and it crashed a few times when I was trying to load into an area, but then I just loaded into another area and then it didn't crash anymore. I also had to update the drivers, so maybe that was the reason why. I swear the loading times are much faster as well. Okay, so we're on the planet, it looks really boring. Not really much to show you. I was hoping there'd be things to shoot, but I guess not. Well, that's what the game looks like. It runs really well. I've got 40 FPS. Uh, okay, I'll show you Cyberpunk 2077 next. Okay, here we have Cyberpunk 2077. Maybe more action to be found in this game. And again, it runs really well. I've got an FPS of 48, 47. This is also running on low, but it still looks great. Look at the lighting, the shadows. And it looks really sharp as well. Maybe because the screen is small, you don't really notice the imperfections. But I think it looks great, as long as you're not pixel peeping. Can't believe a game like this can play on a handheld device. It's amazing. Technology has come so far. I want to try and get into a more, a brighter, a more well-lit area. There's too many shadows here. I can't believe this is actually playing, though. I thought it would be like a really ugly, laggy, stupid mess. Look, 46 FPS. It's so smooth. There's no lag at all. It's smoother than my gaming laptop plays this game. It's insane. Why is it everywhere dark so far? I want to find a bright area so you can actually see what's going on. But anyway, I think you can see how smooth it is. I don't know how well it does. Oops, just ran over a policeman. This feels so good to play. And also it's nice having this little keyboard because now my hand's not getting burned by having it resting on the laptop. I don't know if there's some people in here to fight. So I get out of the car, got my big gun. Look at the combat. It's so much better than Starfield as well. Stuff feels like a rubbish version of cyberpunk. The combat feels so much better in this. I forgot how to do that, that dash. And then we got the mono wire, the katana. Whoops. This game runs so well. see that I 
I can't believe how good this is. This has to be the best handheld gaming device I've ever tried. Why would you even get a Switch OLED? The games on the Switch OLED are rubbish compared to this. You can't play Starfield and Cyberpunk on the Switch. And then you can't get Xbox Gaming Pass on the Steam Deck. Whoa. Look at the graphics. What's happened to his arm? Oh, his arm was like twisted and bent behind himself. I can't believe how good this looks. It's in amazing, amazing. Look, his arms like glitched behind his back. Oh, he's walking towards the explosive barrels. Thanks for that. <laughs> Why do they walk towards the explosive barrels? Idiot. So, yeah, I think you can tell that I'm very pleased with this. And for the price, I mean, $700. What can you buy for $700 that allows you to do this? You could build a computer, I guess. But for $700... What are you going to build, like, RTX 2000 series with a Core i5? That's probably the best you can get. Or maybe even less than a, an RTX 2000 series, maybe like a GTX 1600 something. Damn, look at this. So smooth. 46 FPS. Oh my god, look at this. I can't believe it. It feels... I mean, it feels pretty good when you hold it handheld and you've got the screen closer to your face, but then you got to use... I don't like using the controls on it. The control button layout is not that comfortable compared to, like, a proper game controller and nothing comes close to using keyboard and mouse but then you need a much bigger screen this screen is a bit too small imagine if they made a 10 inch version of this but without the controller things so it's just like a tablet Yeah, this is really cool. I can just drive around for ages. So smooth. It feels so good as well. The way it's responsive. Yeah, I think that should be enough for today's video. <laughs>